Good, I'm sharing now. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, give you a bit of background on Looker. We've been around for about seven years now. Uh, it's, we are more than just a BI platform. Uh, it's more in terms of a data platform that we see ourselves. And what we see on the second slide is we've seen over the years um, companies who started to do analytics with the likes of workbook like Excel or advanced workbook like some in-memory BI tools, which Basically, some companies moved up to what we call in-app reporting. So the reporting can get into your Salesforce, your HubSpot, your Marketo, uh, tools like this. And then companies moved up to giving more data to the business users with the kind of automated reporting that will get into your inbox on a daily basis, weekly basis. The limitations we see about this is as a business user, if I get that report in my inbox and if I need to ask more questions to the data, I would need to go back every time to the data team who has access to the data, which is not really scalable. And what Looker believes, and that's what we've been putting in place for the last few years, is you should be able to provide self-service exploration to your business users. That means allowing them to ask and answer their own questions without having to every time go back to the team who has access to the data. Also, the type of issues on slide three that we tend to work towards is, and we see on companies we talk to, is the first one is called bottleneck. So the example would be having one person on one team only having access to the data. And you see it the business users having to queue and wait for that team to have the bandwidth and the time to answer ad hoc requests, which can take sometimes just minutes, hours, or days because the data team has much more strategic things to do than uh, running ad hoc requests for the business users. The issue that bottlenecks, like because the business users don't want to wait for the answers to get their reports and dashboards to be able to run their own business units, they would lead to what we call data chaos. And basically data chaos is, take the example of these four people on the slide, would be, let's say, finance, marketing, sales, and engineering. who all basically are gonna try to define their own matrix on their own KPIs based on the type of data which is available to their own business application. The example for sales would be going into your CRM, and saying that's my revenue based on the last six months based on that margin. But like that's KPI, which is specifically defined by the sales team, which might not be aligned with what the finance team has in mind. But that means that when we all get together to get to make a business decision, it's just getting messy because we're not working up the same basis. So there's no governance on the data. The third part that we see as a common issue with companies that we talk to is the time that you're going to waste with the development team the, and the resources, having them to run again the ad hoc request for the business users, but also having them to <clears throat> try to build something from scratch. While there's loads of platforms on the market available, like ready to go, without having to invest in terms of development time. To give you a bit of positioning on Looker <clears throat> on the slide four, uh, we had what we call three waves of BI tools over the last decades. The first one was tools uh, who came along, the first ones on the BI world were more in terms of strong in terms of governance, scalability. Uh, that was some of the first BI platforms you could find on the market. The issues with them were limitation in terms of visualization but also um, they were heavy to maintain and costly to acquire. That the market moved up to requesting more scalability, more flexibility in self-service for the business users. And that's where you had the likes of other tools, like what we call more in-memory tools, who came on the market providing nice visualization, uh, providing a certain level of self-service to business users but because they're in-memory tool, that means that they're forcing you to aggregate the data at the database level, extract it and import it into the platform. 
which means that you're not able to provide a real governance to your uh, to the data. So Luca will sit right in the middle to provide the company's best of both worlds. And the way we'll do it on the following slide is, is pretty unique to Luca. The first one is your data will stay in your database. So that means two things. The first one is, as you're going to hear from Snowflake later on, companies are investing in some of the most powerful databases, data warehouse at the moment. We can leverage all that data warehouse power and strength directly from Looker because we're querying directly the database and we're not forcing you to aggregate at the database level on extracted and import. That also means that if you're looking into getting live data, live analytics to your business users, either internal or external, is the best way to do it because we, as a business user, I can directly query the database without having any technical knowledge. The second approach of the way we do things, it's what we call LookML. So it's a modeling layer. Uh, that's where you're going to be able to define all the relationship between your data, between the different tables that you have in your data warehouse, which table did shown to which one, what kind of makes sense for the business. But that's where you're also going to define once the KPIs and the metrics that matters to the organization. That means that everybody is going to be working off the same basis. So you're going to get rid of, obviously, the data chaos that I mentioned right before, because there's not going to be any department defining their own metrics. It's all going to be a single source of truth and providing the whole organization real data governance. The third part is more geared toward the business user to basically solve the bottleneck issue in a way of, we believe that you're gathering so much data on a daily basis. There's so much more value that you could get out of that data that we want to allow the business users to go by themselves, explore, create their own reports and dashboards, share it with different teams, but also collaborate on it. And at the same time, being able to schedule alerts, real-time reporting and this other approach. The looker difference, as we can go back to on the, the following slide, is really looker is not right. It's not just um, a visualization tool. Uh, you can see on the market, there's 20, 30, 40 companies doing visualization at the moment. Looker is more data platform where we're going to allow you to take actions on the data directly from the platform. And make a use case that we have with lot of customers is they will connect their AdWords account to Looker and define thresholds based on a specific AdWords campaign. And if that AdWords campaign results are too low and they're not performing well enough, Looker would automatically trigger and ask AdWords to stop the campaign. Another approach could be if you want to look into your end customers, you want to in provide any loyalty program to them. You could also look at triggering automatically emails uh, to them based on uh, the last purchase they've made or if they haven't been back on your website or didn't purchase anything for the, for the last one. The second part is <clears throat> data bottleneck between data playgrounds. So what we call data playgrounds, going back to the fact of really getting letting the business users based obviously on the user rights and attributes that you give them, the chance to go by themselves and ask the questions to the data without having to go back every time to the data team, to the tech team, who again, that team has better things to do than running ad hoc requests constantly. The third point is really around that, that, that data chaos. Uh, again, because of that modeling layer that I mentioned earlier, we're going to provide a, a single source of truth in terms of the data and governance that you'll be able to put in place. And also, obviously, allowing the business users to get the benefits at, of one platform, to get into one specific platform to have access to all the data that matters to them, instead of having to go through different business application, applications constantly. Yeah, so some examples of different customers through Looker. So uh, 
we work with any industries, any size of companies. We can go from like startups with like three, four employees to, as you can see, the likes of Amazon or Tipe, which is in the room as well, uh, Twilio and other companies like this who basically have been seeing the value of Looker in terms of uh, time saving for the data team, but also making quicker data driven decisions for the business users. And the slide following is, it's an example of a customer called Get Your Guide, uh, that if you travel, you might have been able to use what these guys do, provide you guides on different cities across the globe. You can see on that chart here that when they started with Looker, they basically had one to two data uh, people in the BI team. The number of users, obviously, number of employees were growing, but like, you can see the breakdown point of the green line here, where the number of ad hoc requests coming to the BI team went down dramatically because you were able to enable the business users to do the work themselves, really empowering them to ask and answer their own questions. And the last slide I want to, to show you, uh, it's about the architecture of, of Luca to give you a complete picture of the, the way we were positioned. Uh, we ruled, you will have at the bottom all the different data sources that you can think of that you use coming from your web analytics to your uh, CRM to your ERP. And all that data would be centralized in one data warehouse, the likes of Snowflake. The difference of Looker compared to the other tools on the market is where basically Looker will sit on the top of that data warehouse. And again, you're going to get in that data platform, the modeling layer that you define, so all your KPIs, all your metrics that basically are important to your business. It's also Git version control, so that's allowing the different people from the dev team or the BI team to collaborate across the model, across reports, dashboards, that then they can decide to publish in different ways to the business users. The first one on the top left that you can see is obviously the web interface that we'll be able to shape, showcase to you later on during the breakout sessions, uh, where basically as a business user with non-technical knowledge, I'll be able to drill down all the way to the raw level of the data we are having to go back to the BI team every day. The other approach is in terms of what we really related to the data platform. So the data actions in triggering real time alerting based on thresholds of KPIs that you've defined, but also extending the capabilities of Looker to third party applications. You've got the examples here of Slack, uh, like the use case would be your customer success team could automatically be alerted on Slack if there's an issue on an account, but also you can obviously export the data to push it to, if you're looking to do machine learning, data science, to Python, anything like this, you can do it through Looker. And the third part of it, it's really, you can provide Looker to either your internal users, but also looking at embedding Looker into your platform. That means that you can provide your end customers premium analytics through an iframe, and then see if there's potential for you to get more value uh, out of this in terms of premium, in terms of potentially monetizing uh, that add-on that you're providing to them. And obviously the API of Looker at the back end is gonna allow you to extend the capabilities. So it's really to picture Looker as your data hub and from there, take any actions you want uh, moving forward. So that's Thank what you I wanted much, to David. show you on the slides this morning. As I said, like we'll be on the breakout sessions later on where the idea is to take you through different use cases of Luca, show you the platform for internal usage, but also uh, the embedding usage uh, and we've got different marketing applications that we can showcase.